Part One, Chapter Two, Section One, of Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky, translated by Constance Garnett, eighteen sixty one to nineteen forty six. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Part One, Chapter Two, Section One. Raskolnikov was not used to crowds, and as we have said before, he avoided society of every sort more especially of late. But now, all at once, he felt a desire to be with other people. Something new seemed to be taking place within him, and with it he felt a sort of thirst for company. He was so weary after a whole month of concentrated wretchedness and gloomy excitement that he longed to rest, if only for a moment, in some other world, whatever it might be. And, in spite of the filthiness of the surroundings, he was glad now to stay in the tavern the master of the establishment was in another room but he frequently came down some steps into the main room his jaunty tarred boots with red turnover tops coming into view each time before the rest of his person he wore a full coat and a horribly greasy black satin waistcoat with no cravat and his whole face seemed smeared like oil with an iron lock at the counter stood a boy of about fourteen and there was another boy somewhat younger who handed whatever was wanted on the counter lay some sliced cucumber some pieces of dried black bread and some fish chopped up small all smelling very bad it was insufferably close and so heavy with the fumes of spirits that five minutes in such an atmosphere might well make a man drunk there are chance meetings with strangers that interest us from the first moment before a word is spoken such was the impression made on raskolnikov by the person sitting a little distance from him who looked like a retired clerk the young man often recalled this impression afterwards and even ascribed it to presentiment he looked repeatedly at the clerk partly no doubt because the latter was staring persistently at him obviously anxious to enter into conversation at the other persons in the room including the tavern keeper the clerk looked as though he were used to their company and weary of it showing a shade of condescending contempt for them as persons of station and culture inferior to his own with whom it would be useless for him to converse he was a man over fifty bald and grizzled of medium height and stoutly built his face bloated from continual drinking was of a yellow even greenish tinge with swollen eyelids out of which keen reddish eyes gleamed like little chinks but there was something very strange in him there was a light in his eyes as though of intense feeling perhaps there were even thought and intelligence but at the same time there was a gleam of something like madness he was wearing an old and hopelessly ragged black dress coat with all its buttons missing except one and that one he had buttoned evidently clinging to this last trace of respectability a crumpled shirt front covered with spots and stains protruded from his canvas waistcoat like a clerk he wore no beard nor moustache but had been so long unshaven that his chin looked like a stiff greyish brush and there was something respectable and like an official about his manner too but he was restless he ruffled up his hair and from time to time let his head drop into his hands dejectedly resting his ragged elbows on the stained and sticky table at last he looked straight at raskolnikov and said loudly and resolutely may i venture honoured sir to engage you in polite conversation for as much as though your exterior would not command respect my experience admonishes me that you are a man of education and not accustomed to drinking i have always respected education when in conjunction with genuine sentiments and i am besides a titular councillor in rank marmeladov such is my name titular councillor i make bold to inquire have you been in the service no i am studying answered the young man somewhat surprised at the grandiloquent style of the speaker and also at being so directly addressed in spite of the momentary desire he had just been feeling for company of any sort on being actually spoken to he felt immediately his habitual irritable and uneasy aversion for any stranger who approached or attempted to approach him a student then or formerly a student cried the clerk just what i thought i'm a man of experience immense experience sir and he tapped his forehead with his fingers in self-approval 
you've been a student or have attended some learned institution but allow me he got up staggered took up his jug and his glass and sat down beside the young man facing him a little sideways he was drunk but spoke fluently and boldly only occasionally losing the thread of his sentences and drawling his words he pounced upon raskolnikov as greedily as though he too had not spoken to a soul for a month honoured sir he began almost with solemnity poverty is not a vice that's a true saying yet i know too that drunkenness is not a virtue and that that's even truer but beggary honoured sir beggary is a vice in poverty you may still retain your innate nobility of soul but in beggary never no one for beggary a man is not chased out of human society with a stick he is swept out with a broom so as to make it as humiliating as possible and quite right too for as much as in beggary i am ready to be the first to humiliate myself hence the pot-house honoured sir a month ago mr lebeziatnikov gave my wife a beating and my wife is a very different matter from me do you understand allow me to ask you another question out of simple curiosity have you ever spent a night on a hay barge on the neva no i have not happened to answered raskolnikov what do you mean well i've just come from one and it's the fifth night i've slept so he filled his glass emptied it and paused bits of hay were in fact clinging to his clothes and sticking to his hair it seemed quite probable that he had not undressed or washed for the last five days his hands particularly were filthy they were fat and red with black nails his conversation seemed to excite a general though languid interest the boys at the counter felt his sniggering the innkeeper came down from the upper room apparently on purpose to listen to the funny fellow and sat down at a little distance yawning lazily but with dignity evidently marmeladov was a familiar figure here and he had most likely acquired his weakness for high-flown speeches from the habit of frequently entering into conversation with strangers of all sorts in the tavern this habit develops into a necessity in some drunkards and especially in those who are looked after sharply and kept in order at home hence in the company of other drinkers they try to justify themselves and even if possible obtain consideration funny fellow proclaimed the innkeeper and why don't you work why aren't you at your duty if you are in the service why am i not at my duty honoured sir marmeladov went on addressing himself exclusively to raskolnikov as though it had been he who put that question to him why am i not at my duty does not my heart ache to think what a useless worm i am a month ago when mr lebeziatnikov beat my wife with his own hands and i lay drunk didn't i suffer excuse me young man has it ever happened to you hmm, well to petition hopelessly for a loan yes it has but what do you mean by hopelessly hopelessly in the fullest sense when you know beforehand that you will get nothing by it you know for instance beforehand with positive certainty that this man this most reputable and exemplary citizen will on no consideration give you money and indeed i ask you why should he for he knows of course that i shan't pay it back from compassion but mr lebeziatnikov who keeps up with modern ideas explained the other day that compassion is forbidden nowadays by science itself and that that's what is done now in england where there is political economy why i ask you should he give it to me and yet though i know beforehand that he won't i set off to him and why do you go put in raskolnikov well when one has no one nowhere else one can go for every man must have somewhere to go since there are times when one absolutely must go somewhere when my own daughter first went out with a yellow ticket then i had to go for my daughter has a yellow passport he added in parenthesis looking with a certain uneasiness at the young man no matter sir no matter he went on hurriedly and with apparent composure when both the boys at the counter guffawed and even the innkeeper smiled no matter i am not confounded by the wagging of their heads for every one knows everything about it already and all that is secret is made open and i accept it all not with contempt but with humility so be it so be it behold the man excuse me young man can you no to put it more strongly and more distinctly not can you but dare you looking upon me assert that i am not a pig 
the young man did not answer a word well the orator began again stolidly and with even increased dignity after waiting for the laughter in the room to subside well so be it i am a pig but she is a lady i have the semblance of a beast but katerina ivanovna my spouse is a person of education and an officer's daughter granted granted i am a scoundrel but she is a woman of a noble heart full of sentiments refined by education and yet oh if only she felt for me honoured sir honoured sir you know every man ought to have at least one place where people feel for him but katerina ivanovna though she is magnanimous she is unjust and yet although i realise that when she pulls my hair she only does it out of pity for i repeat without being ashamed she pulls my hair young man he declared with redoubled dignity hearing the sniggering again but my god if she would but once oh but no no it's all in vain and it's no use talking no use talking for more than once my wish did come true and more than once she has felt for me but such is my fate and i am a beast by nature rather assented the innkeeper yawning marmeladov struck his fist resolutely on the table such is my fate do you know sir do you know i have sold her very stockings for drink not her shoes that would be more or less in the order of things but her stockings her stockings i have sold for drink her mohair shawl i sold for drink a present to her long ago her own property not mine and we live in a cold room and she caught cold this winter and has begun coughing and spitting blood too we have three little children and katerina ivanovna is at work from morning till night she is scrubbing and cleaning and washing the children for she's been used to cleanliness from a child but her chest is weak and she has a tendency to consumption and i feel it do you suppose i don't feel it and the more i drink the more i feel it that's why i drink too i try to find sympathy and feeling in drink i drink so that i may suffer twice as much and as though in despair he laid his head down on the table young man he went on raising his head again in your face i seem to read some trouble of mine when you came in i read it and that was why i addressed you at once for in unfolding to you the story of my life i do not wish to make myself a laughing-stock before these idle listeners who indeed know all about it already but i am looking for a man of feeling and education know then that my wife was educated in a high-class school for the daughters of noblemen and on leaving she danced the shawl dance before the governor and other personages for which she was presented with a gold medal and a certificate of merit the medal well the medal of course was sold long ago hm, um, but the certificate of merit is in her trunk still and not long ago she showed it to our landlady and although she is most continually on bad terms with the landlady yet she wanted to tell some one or other of her past honours and of the happy days that are gone i don't condemn her for it i don't blame her for the one thing left her is recollection of the past and all the rest is dust and ashes yes yes she is a lady of spirit proud and determined she scrubs the floors herself and has nothing but black bread to eat but won't allow herself to be treated with disrespect that's why she would not overlook mr lebeziatnikov's rudeness to her and so when he gave her a beating for it she took to her bed more from the hurt to her feelings than from the blows she was a widow when i married her with three children one smaller than the other she married her first husband an infantry officer for love and ran away with him from her father's house she was exceedingly fond of her husband but he gave way to cards got into trouble and with that he died he used to beat her at the end and although she paid him back of which i have authentic documentary evidence to this day she speaks of him with tears and she throws him up at me and i am glad i am glad that though only in imagination she should think of herself as having once been happy and she was left at his death with three children in a wild and remote district where i happened to be at the time and she was left in such hopeless poverty that although i have seen many ups and downs of all sorts i don't feel equal to describing it even her relations had all thrown her off and she was proud too excessively proud and then honoured sir and then i being at the time a widower with a daughter of fourteen left me by my first wife offered her my hand for i could not bear the sight of such suffering you can judge the extremity of her calamities that she a woman of education and culture and distinguished family should have consented to be my wife but she did 
weeping and sobbing and wringing her hands she married me for she had nowhere to turn do you understand sir do you understand what it means when you have absolutely nowhere to turn no that you don't understand yet and for a whole year i performed my duties conscientiously and faithfully and did not touch this he tapped the jug with his finger for i have feelings but even so i could not please her and then i lost my place too and that through no fault of mine but through changes at the office and then i did touch it it will be a year and a half ago soon since we found ourselves at last after many wanderings and numerous calamities in this magnificent capital adorned with innumerable monuments here too i obtained a situation i obtained it and i lost it again do you understand this time it was through my own fault i lost it for my weakness had come out we have now part of a room at malia fyodorovna lipovetsel's and what we live upon and what we pay our rent with i could not say there are a lot of people living there beside ourselves dirt and disorder a perfect bedlam hm yes and meanwhile my daughter by my first wife has grown up and what my daughter has had to put up with from her stepmother whilst she was growing up i won't speak of for though katerina ivanovna is full of generous feelings she is a spirited lady irritable and short-tempered yes but it's no use going over that sonya as you may well fancy has had no education i did make an effort four years ago to give her a course of geography and universal history but as i was not very well up in those subjects myself and we had no suitable books and what books we had hmm, anyway we have not even those now so all our instruction came to an end we stopped at cyrus of persia since she has attained years of maturity she has read other books of romantic tendency and of late she has read with great interest a book she got through mr lebeziatnikov lewis's physiology do you know it and even recounted extracts from it to us and that's the whole of her education and now may i venture to address you honoured sir on my own account with a private question do you suppose that a respectable poor girl can earn much by honest work not fifteen farthings a day can she earn if she is respectable and has no special talent and that without putting her work down for an instant and what's more ivan ivanitch klopstock the civil councillor have you heard of him has not to this day paid her for the half dozen linen shirts she made him and drove her roughly away stamping and reviling her on the pretext that the shirt collars were not made like the pattern and were put in askew and there are the little ones hungry and katerina ivanovna walking up and down and wringing her hands her cheeks flushed red as they always are in that disease here you live with us says she you eat and drink and are kept warm and you do nothing to help and much she gets to eat and drink when there is not a crust for the little ones for three days i was lying at the time well what of it i was lying drunk and i heard my sonya speaking she is a gentle creature with a soft little voice fair hair and such a pale thin little face she said katerina ivanovna am i really to do a thing like that and darya Fransovna, a woman of evil character and very well known to the police had two or three times tried to get at her through the landlady and why not said katerina ivanovna with a jeer you are something mighty precious to be so careful of but don't blame her don't blame her honoured sir don't blame her she was not herself when she spoke but driven to distraction by her illness and the crying of the hungry children and it was said more to wound her than anything else for that's katerina ivanovna's character and when children cry even from hunger she falls to beating them at once at six o'clock i saw sonya get up put on her kerchief and her cape and go out of the room and about nine o'clock she came back she walked straight up to katerina ivanovna and she laid thirty roubles on the table before her in silence she did not utter a word she did not even look at her she simply picked up our big green drop de dom shawl we have a shawl made of drop de dom put it over her head and face and lay down on the bed with her face to the wall and her little shoulders and her body kept shuddering and they went on lying there just as before and then i saw young man i saw katerina ivanovna in the same silence go up to sonya's little bed she was on her knees all the evening kissing sonya's feet and would not get up and then they both fell asleep in each other's arms together together yes and i lay drunk marmoladov stopped short as though his voice had failed him then he hurriedly filled his glass drank and cleared his throat
End of part one, chapter two, section one. Recording by expatriate in Bangor, Maine.